You know, it's, it's really kind of sad when someone can't let go of something and they're desperately trying to cling to it, despite the fact that society has moved on. Now, I'm not talking about holding on to something good as society moves away from, say, Christianity. Holding on to that's a good thing and reminding people to hold on to it. That's a good thing. But there are those who want to hang on to things that are bad because it gives them a place of worth, self-importance, and, of course, fleecing people for money. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! I'm Pastor Marty. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, and once you are, smack the bell. Click the word all. That will give you notification of my rants, my ravings, my undeniably flawless reasonings. Please like and share this video. That's the only way that we can get the word out that we're here. Thank you so much for being a part of the Afternoon Drive. Jasmine Crockett is a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. She represents a county within Dallas, Texas, and she's upset. She's upset that there are white people who feel that they haven't had a fair shot, they haven't had a fair break, that, that they have had to suffer, and she don't want to hear it. She don't want to hear it because only she and people of color have ever felt any type of prejudice, betrayal, or oppression. It's because you can then misuse words like oppression. There has been no oppression for the white man in this country. You tell me which white men were dragged out of their homes. You tell me which one of them got dragged all the way across an ocean and told that you were gonna go and work. We are gonna steal your wives. We are going to rape your wives. That didn't happen. That is oppression. We didn't ask to be here. We're not the same migrants that y'all constantly come up against. We didn't run away from home. We were stolen. So yeah, we are going to sit here and be offended when you want to sit here and act like, and, and, and don't let it escape you that it is white men on this side of the aisle telling us people of color on this side of the aisle that, that y'all are the ones being oppressed. Well, far be it from me to get in the way of a perfectly good argument and rant with, um, that's what I'm groping for here. Oh yeah, facts. But Jasmine, let me give you just a few facts right, right off the top of my head. Number one, you're not oppressed. You've never been oppressed. You're not oppressed now. You have a law degree. You serve in the United States House of Representatives. You have a place of power. You have a place of privilege. I don't care the color of your skin. That's not what's the issue here. You, as an individual, as a woman of color, are not oppressed. This whole idea, we didn't come here willfully. We were abducted. We were forced to come here. Then go back. If... If you're here against your will, we do have freedom in this country. And thanks to the election results of two weeks ago, those freedoms are now once again guaranteed. And you have the freedom to leave. If you feel like that you are living among oppressors in a place that you aren't supposed to be, that you don't want to be, that your family and ancestral line is not from here, you did not choose to come here, then go. Don't stay. Go back to where your family, your heritage is from and see what life is like for you there. See what you can accomplish there. See what they give you there. But in reality, that's not really what you're after. You want to keep using this issue to keep people stirred up, angry, and somehow that funds you. And I know we don't like to talk about this part of it. Oh, Pastor Marty, don't, don't go down that trail. But it's the truth. It's the truth. 
What has Al Sharpton ever done to actually improve anybody's life? Let me make this really fast for you. Zero. He is nothing but a race pimp. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Did I study it, stutter when I said that? He is a race baiting pimp, and he uses his own people as the hoes that he is fleecing to make money. Lives in apartments that cost twenty thousand dollars a month when he owes I forget how many millions in back taxes. Had Kamala pay him a half a million dollars for an interview. And we thought Kamala was this intelligent, capable woman, according to Sonny Holstein over on The View, who was more than capable of being president, and yet America chose this misogynistic fascist Donald Trump. Really? She burned through a billion dollars in a hundred days and still left a $20 million debt. But she's capable. She could run the country. We're suffering from Bidenomics now. Can you imagine if Kamalaomics took over where we would all be? Okay. So I digress. I backtrack. Um, J Jasmine, please. Why don't you learn a little history? When you sit there and say, no white man has ever been oppressed. Let me give you some history, because you wanted to give us a little history. And again, I would ask you this. Though the slave trade was awful, when we put things into historical context, we understand that slavery did exist before what happened to your African ancestors who ended up here. We can open the pages of the Bible and see slavery. The Jews themselves were the slaves of Egypt. They built the pyramids, the Sphinx, and the great cities under the taskmaster's whip. They got themselves freed when God sent them a deliverer named Moses. You would have thought they would have learned their lesson, but they rebelled against God, and then they found themselves the slaves of Babylon. This has been perpetual throughout Israel's history. And it predates anything that happened on the continent of Africa. So don't say white people have never been oppressed or forced into slavery. Not true. Moving forward. Our country was founded by the oppressed. It began with the pilgrims who came here fleeing religious persecution. They were being oppressed. And I don't just mean life was made a little uncomfortable for them because they were Protestant. Families were separated. Homes were confiscated. Businesses were taken by the government. They were forced into servitude based on their religious beliefs. They finally made it to Holland where they got a little reprieve but the Dutch wanted them gone. And on the shores of Plymouth they came in the winter and they eked out and survived. They came here because of oppression. As they founded cities and towns and colonies and became subject to Britain, they could produce goods here. They could not sell them here. They all had to be exported back to England and then turn right around and ship back here to be sold here. The people who cut down the trees for the lumber then had to send them to England only to have that lumber come back and then be sold to us at a profit for England and with a tariff and a tax. We were allowed to produce nothing here and build wealth for ourselves. It all had to go back to England, and then it would be it would come back and sold at a profit for England, not for the people who were actually producing the products right here. That's why we fought a war of independence. 
This entire country was founded on fleeing oppression. And you might want to ask yourself who it was that gained financially from the slave trade to here. And I'm not just talking about the plantation owners in the South. There weren't white people in Africa selling Africans to the English and to the Americans. It was their own people selling them. Today, human trafficking, whether it's crossing our southern border, is slavery. There is slavery going on right now in what you refer to as your continent of origin, slave labor produces the cobalt battery in your cell phone, in your laptop, in your electric vehicle if you own one. 80% of the cobalt used to create lithium batteries comes from a place on this planet that engages in slave labor to produce it. I don't see you decrying that. What I see you decrying is the fact that you want to say that you are descended from the slaves of the 1800s, and somehow that entitles you to financial remuneration forever and places in society because you started out not at the back, or not at the front, but at the back. Though your grandparents and great-grandparents could make that argument, you can't. I believe you were born, what, 1981, 1982? You've not been oppressed. You've not been held back. You've not been discriminated against in a way that puts your life in peril. I'm not saying you haven't heard unkind statements. You're never going to regulate stupidity and hatred away from people. That's a sad fact, but that's what we call in theology the sin nature. People say and do stupid things. People hold prejudicial views. You're never going to regulate that away. But the reality is, you live a pretty good life, don't you? You make a good salary working as a, quote, servant of the people, and when you decide to retire or somebody else beats you and you are not reelected, you maintain your salary forever. Forever. You have, you claim, ancestors on the mother continent who I promise you do not have guaranteed income who get up every day and it is a fight to find food and water for the day. So I'm, I'm a little tired based on the fact I'm not a plantation owner, I'm not the descendant of a plantation owner. The bottom line is, we're not saying that there isn't some amount of racism in the world today. There most certainly is, and I hate to tell you this, there always will be. Is there systemic Racism at work oppressing you? No. Again, I can't rule out what stupid, foolish individuals might say. Or groups who think that because of the pigmentation, coloration of their skin, they somehow think that that makes them superior. <clears throat> but this business where you keep talking about this in a way that keeps people inflamed, and then you represent yourself to your people, I'm going to do something about it, but you got to give me money, 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 got to give me money. Roland Martin, Mad Maxine Waters, Al Sharpton. Jasmine, if you want to do something for your people, get on the Trump agenda because when we look back at his first presidency, nobody did more for the black community than Donald Trump did. 
And nobody did more for the urban cities and renewal and bringing things back than he did. And it all went up in flames during a summer of rioting. And now you have businesses that no longer want to go into the inner city and do any type of business there because the Democratic mayors and police chiefs are basically just allowing their stores to be shoplifted and vandalized into rubble. And corporate America has said, we're done there. So where do the people who live there shop? Where do they get what they need from police protection to goods and services? If you want to help your people, stop the grandstanding speeches and let's roll our sleeves up together and let's work to make life better by bringing in the businesses, by bringing in opportunities for them to work and earn and build actual wealth for themselves and their families. That's a solution. What you're doing is nothing but grandstanding race baiting for the purposes of you getting TV time over the, the, the incendiary comments you make. It will grant you a certain amount of fame and it turns into grift for book deals and interviews, etc., etc., etc. And you're not helping anyone but yourself.